Right, a uh, excellent right now, guys. I've got to go to um, theatre very quickly, so let's get through this very quickly. This is Mrs. Smith, isn't it? What Mrs. Smith had done? So Mrs. Smith uh, was came in a couple of days ago from a road traffic accident. Is that a laparotomy and a laceration over the hands? A couple of days ago. Now oh yes, yes, yes. James has told me about that. He, she said a laparotomy. Uh, sorry, one second. She, she, she. I understand that the general surgeons have seen her, and they were happy for, from yesterday that she could go home. And all that sort of thing. Right, let, let's let's go let's go in let's go in and, and see her, shall we? Good, to go. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. How are you today? Mm -hmm. Right. So we've looked through the notes and so, and then the general surgeons have said that you seem to be fine. The plan is for you to go home. Right. I'm sure with the, the your GP will be able to look after you and all that sort of thing. So best of luck with everything. All right. See you later. Right. right come on, guys. I've got to go to theatre. Right, so this is Mrs. Smith. Hello, Jason. Hi. How was it? So this lady, uh, I think she was in a road traffic accident. Is that she correct? She was, yes. Yes. Yeah, so let's have a little look through a note. So was that three or four days ago? That's right, four days ago, yes. Yeah, and so it looks like she's had a laparotomy. Is that correct? Yeah. And she's had a laceration on the arm. Let's look at these notes. Ah, yes, okay. So, and the general surgeons have seen this lady and they're going to see her later today. Mm. Right, now let's have a look at the charts, Jose, and the uh, right, okay. Mm -hmm. So she's musing on zero, no temperature. No temperature yeah. at all. Uh, the vitals are okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And what's what sort of, um, what's she got on a drug chart then, okay. So she's just not on any regular medication. She's taking a bit of oromorph here. Right. Should we pop in and have a have a look at this lady? Yes, sure. All right. Great. Now let's let's just get our hands and do a little thing there. Right. Let's go in, gentlemen. Good morning, Mrs. Smith. Good Are you decent? Can we come in? Yes, that's fine. Right. Hello there. Remember, I'm Mr. Majumda. I'm one of the plastic surgeons. Nice to see you again. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to have a little. I've got uh, Jose with me and Jason. I'm going to have a little look around and see how things are. And then we'll have a little chat. Is that okay? Fine. Right? Okay. So you seem to be weeing all right, which is good. Got a couple of vomit bowls there. Hmm. One of those full, one's empty. We need to find out what's going on there. Right. So we'll have a look at your charts and so on outside. And uh, I'm going to come around and look at that drain, that little tube coming out of your tummy in a little while. How do you feel? Uh, a little bit sick. I was sick last night and I had a you? bit of discomfort, yeah. Yeah. And, and did, did, did the medication help? Well, yesterday she had oromorph. After that, she started feeling a bit sick and she had a little bit of vomit. Um, but we gave cyclicine and after that has been alright. Well, that helped you a little bit? It has. Yeah, and you're starting to get out of it. feeling a little bit more human now, are you? I am, slowly. Yeah. Very good, excellent. So, Jason, you were on call last night, weren't you? I was, yes. Yeah, okay. Anything to report? For Mrs. Smith, she's been alright from your point of view. Yes, I think she's ready to go. Yeah, right. Uh, she's still looking like she's a little bit peaky. We might keep you in a bit. I just need to have a little look at this hand of yours. May I just have a little look? I've, I've done a bit of alcohol thing on my hands outside to keep them clean. Can I move your fingers? They feel alright? Because yeah. we do that to make sure that you're, you're not getting too tight or anything. Yeah. Now, I'm going to come around and have a little look at your drain. Yeah. And I need to take a little feel of your tummy. Is that okay? Yeah. Right, so I'm coming around to have a little bit. Now, the other thing I'd need to do is I need to have a little listen to your tummy to make sure everything is working all right. Okay, to make, make sure that all the, 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 um, the, the, the tummy is functioning properly. Okay. Fantastic, and then we'll make sure everything is okay. The legs okay. You're moving your legs and so on. Fantastic. So the um, post-operative plan was for um, Mrs. Smith to go home um, today. Would I go ahead and? Uh, yeah. Well, I, th I think yeah. That the post-op plan was made two or three days ago, wasn't it? That's and right. I think it's important that we take on board what's happening now. Sure. Uh, and I think there's still a couple of things. She's still got oxygen. She's still got. IV fluid is still not totally well, so why don't we hold on to this lady, observe her for a, uh, another day or so, sure. and then review the situation, so don't leap to conclusions about 
you know, what's happening. What, what do you think, Jose? I agree with you, Mr. Mayumba. Uh, I'll stop the oxygen, uh, we'll stop the IV fluids and see how she goes later on. We'll let you know later on. Okay, so is that okay with you, Mrs. Smith? Yes. You prefer that? Do you feel it makes you feel a bit better before you go home? Yes. Okay, excellent. Great, so that little skit we did just now would hopefully have demonstrated to you the incorrect and then the correct way of doing a ward run. Uh, and ward run is something that many, many juniors have to do and often you may be left alone to make decisions or at least start the decision-making process. So I've developed uh, the Yorkshire L's or the seven L's that would hopefully be a mnemonic that'll help you do a ward run comprehensively. The first was look and you look at the notes, you look at the prescription chart, you look at the, the um, vital pack or the vital signs, you look at any reports, and you look at any bit of paper that may be necessary, and then you go and see the patient. And when you go into the patient's room, make sure you have a, a global look at the room, look for any vomit bowls, what's in the vomit, what's in the urine bag, you know, if there are any wet dressings anywhere, there's blood on the uh, sheets, anything. Also look at the patient. Eyeballing the patient is very important. Just get used to looking at a patient and realizing, hmm, are they well, are they not well? And that look part of it is hugely important. The second uh, L is listen. So listen to the patient, very important. Talk to the patient. If nothing else, it makes the patient feel like they're a human being and that they're not some object that you're going to see. It's not the liver on bed seven, but Mrs. Smith who has had a liver operation. But do speak to them, find out how they are, and they will give you vital information. Speak to the nursing staff who are involved in the care of the patient. Oftentimes the, the patients may not tell the doctor everything, but it will tell the nurses. And the, the nurses may have a handover of how the patient did the night before. Speak to any members of your team or any other team such as the uh, junior doctors or the speech therapist or the physiotherapist or whoever is looking after the patient, get as much information in. Don't be afraid to listen. And then, of course, listen to any part of the patient that may be necessary. You may listen to the chest, you may listen to the tummy, depending on whatever uh, illness the patient might have. The, the third L in um, the, the seven Yorkshire L's, is the feel. Yes, the L is the last letter of the word feel, but you know, you feel for the tummy, if somebody's had a, uh, a tummy operation or they might have had an appendicitis or have something wrong with their tummy and to ensure that they don't have a rigid tummy or there's pain anywhere, you feel for pain in other parts of the body, you move the fingers to ensure they haven't got a compartment syndrome, but there are multiple elements of feel in when you're uh, examining the patient. The, the fourth L is don't leap to conclusions, L for leap. And that's important in, in as much as when you go and see patients as a junior doctor, many times there's already guidelines in the operation notes says patients go home on day three, drain to come out on day two, etc. Don't leap to conclusions before you've assessed the patient completely. When you've assessed the patient, that guideline may need to change. You might need to get a senior opinion, you might need to get more investigation, you might need to get another team involved. So Come to the conclusion depending on your assessment of the patient, don't leap to conclusion. Then it's quite important, the fifth and sixth L, which is log legibly. And by that I mean when you're writing the notes, make sure that the handwriting is legible. When you write something, you're not writing for yourself, you're writing actually for someone else to read. And if you, nobody can read it, it's a pointless exercise. It's also a legal document. Make sure you put the date, make sure you put the time, make sure you put who you are, make sure you put your contact number, possibly your GMC number as well. And every time you write notes, remember to log legibly. And the final L, the seventh L, which is quite important, is that every time you do a ward run, every single patient is an episode of learning. Learn something and you will find that every patient has something to teach you, every clinical scenario has something to teach you. So when you come upon a similar scenario later, you'd have learned something. So remember the Yorkshire L's, look, listen, feel with the L at the end, don't leap to conclusions, log legibly, and the final one, learn. Thank you very much.